Welcome to the solution of Power BI practice round number five. Now this week it was about how we can use Power Query to pivot your data set and get it into the right structure so that we can build visualizations in a report. And also what to do when it doesn't work. If you're visiting us for the very first time, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to improve your Power BI skills with our weekly challenges. Now let's get started. For this challenge, we are working with a dataset that contains order information for restaurants over the period 2015 till 2019. Uh, it's about half a million rows and stored in a CSV file. Now it looks like this. Now what we want to do is connect to this file with Power BI and import the data. And once you have imported it, you can start transforming it. And I'm going to show you three different ways, starting off with the easiest one and the last one being the most difficult one. As we are going to connect to a text CSV file, it's important that uh, you choose the regional settings for how numbers and dates get interpreted. Okay, so let's go first to file, then options and settings, options, and then under current file, regional settings, here I am choosing English, United Kingdom. Okay, then also for the very first approach, uh, I'm going to use a preview feature. So let's go here to preview features. And then make sure that the import text using examples is turned on. And for this, you at least need the August 2020 release. Okay, so let's click on OK. Now I'm going to connect to my text CSV file. Now, if you have this new feature enabled, then you see a new button, extract table using examples. Okay, now let's try to make use of that new feature. You see, it gives me an error message that it couldn't create a table. We were unable to read the text file. Okay, so that's a little bit unfortunate. So I don't know the exact limitations for this new feature. However, if you slim it down, even to 300,000, then it would still work. However, I just trim down the original source to the first 10,000, then I'm gonna use that feature. Then in the end, I'm just gonna replace the source with the original file. Let's go here to get data again, text CSV. Now I'm gonna connect here to restaurant orders that only has the first 10,000 rows. Click again on extract table using example. You see now there's no problem. And I just can go here and say what the first column should be. And the first column, I want to have the order number. And that's gonna be, here it is, 16118. I see it already pops up in the IntelliSense. And then usually you also need to type in the second one. So the second one is that over here is also 16118. I see now I figured out the sequence. So that column is done. And then you can just continue with the second one. So that's going to be the uh, order date. Now here you see we have the value that represents that date. So we have the 43680. And I also want to have whatever comes after the decimal because that's the time indicator. Okay. And you see now it picks that up for the whole column. And just like this, you can do all of the other columns as well. Now, once you have done all of the columns, you just simply click here on transform data. And just like this, it creates the whole query that generates that table that we manually typed in. Okay, so it created all of the steps automatically. That's it. Now that's definitely the easiest. Now one thing that we still need to fix here is the order date, which shows still the number instead of the date that it represents, okay? Now we cannot just change it to a date um, because before the last step, you see how it's still text, okay? If I would transform that now to a date time, that wouldn't work, okay? You first need to transform it to a decimal and now you can add a new step when you say date time add a new step you see now it works okay so now we have the date and the time and we can split it apart okay now to split it you just simply go to transform split column by delimiter and the delimiter is going to be the space then click on okay and you see we have two columns now the first one is then the date so let's name it like that and the second one is going to be our time column now we want to remove the total number of products. We don't need that. So we're just gonna click here on remove. And that's it. It generates the whole query for us, okay? The only thing that we still need to do is to change the source file to the original CSV. 
So let's do that. Okay, so before we load the data, let's also discuss the other two approaches. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new query. So new source, tag CSV, and I'm gonna connect to our data set. Now I'm just gonna click on okay. As a first step, let's promote the first row to headers. Okay, so I'm gonna go to transform, say here, use first row as headers. And the first time when I tried to clean this data set, I just went here to attribute and then transform and pivot. Because what we try to do is we have to turn these rows that we have for order number, order date, item name, quantity, product price, and total products, and these six rows they repeat over and over again, we want to convert that into columns. And that process is called pivoting. So if you just go to transform and you click on pivot column, now where are our values in the value column? Then in the advanced options, I do not want to aggregate. And then I'm gonna click here on okay. And you see, it just returns errors. And that might be quite surprising the first time that you end up with a result like this. Now let me show you why this is on a similar data set. So exactly the same data, I just took out some, some rows. I'm gonna go here to the attribute column, transform pivot column. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. So value advanced options, don't aggregate, click okay. Same thing that happens, all right? Okay, so here I have another example with the same data, attribute value column. However, we have an additional column for the order number, okay? And this extra column you need for the pivoting to work. So basically for each item that was sold, we have six rows, order number, date, item name, quantity, product price, total products. And that information repeats over and over again, okay? And we need a unique identifier for each six rows that we have. Otherwise this pivoting is returning you this error that we had before. All right, so let's go to attribute and then click on transform pivot column. Here we have as the value column value, and then we do not want to aggregate. Then let's click okay. You see, now it works. Okay, so how can we use this knowledge now to fix the problem that we have in the original data set? All right, so here we have attribute and value, and now I need to have this unique identifier for every six rows. All right, so one way to do this is go to add column and then we're gonna add an index column, okay? So here you see we just start counting from zero all the way up. Now that we have our index column, we need to convert it so that we have a unique value for each six rows block that we have in our data set. So I'm gonna go to transform, standard, and then we can use this integer divide. And then as a value, we need to choose seven. And you see for the first six rows, we have a zero, then we have six ones, then we have six twos, etc. All right, now let's try the pivoting again. Okay, so I'm gonna go to attribute, transform pivot column. Now the values column, that is value. And then under advanced options, make sure that you choose don't aggregate and click okay. And there you go. Now we just have to remove the columns that we don't need, which is the index column. Also the total products column I don't need. All right. And then we can do the same transformation on the order date as what we have done before. So this second method is the approach that I took when I solved this challenge. Now, then I got a solution sent to me that was actually nicer and more advanced. So let's also go over that solution. Now I'm gonna go here to new source. I'm gonna choose blank query. And let's first paste in the file path where you have the CSV file, okay? Now, if you wanna change the name here in the applied step for the source tab, then you cannot just right click and then rename. You have to go to view, advanced editor. And let's say we wanna call this file path. Let's copy that and make sure that uh, you also return the file path here. Click okay, you see. And this is how you can rename the source tab. Okay, so now that we have a file path, let's then get the actual data inside of this text file, okay? And return it in the form of a list. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, click on the FX button to add a new step. 
Okay, so let's go to the formula bar and use the function lines and then dot. And then you see from binary pops up already. And then over here, now we want to use another function, which is called file dot contents. Okay, which gets us the actual file. Now the file path we have, so we can just refer to that. Then we have two closing brackets, I press enter. I see it is a combination of two functions. And so if I take this one out, and so here the file that contents, let me take that one. You see that if I use this function file.contents in a new step, it just gives me here that CSV file, okay? And this CSV file is then used in this other function, lines dot from binary, okay? So which just gets all of the lines and generates this list over here, which we can now start to manipulate. So in the next two steps, I'm gonna first create a list with only the values and then a list with only the headers. Okay, so let's first generate the list with values. Okay, so I'm gonna add a new step. And here we can use the function list dot. Now we want to use a transformation. So let's go for list dot transform. Now here we have to first refer back to the previous step. So that's custom one. And then we want to split it, okay? So that we only extract the value that is after the comma. So for each row, we want to have the text after certain delimiter. Now here we have the function text dot after delimiter that allows you to do that. And we want to take each value that we have in the cell. You can do that with uh, the underscore here, and then comma, and the separator that we have is a comma, okay? So put that in between quotation marks. Close the uh, list transform function. Here, yeah, two times list. Okay, then press enter. And you see, now we have the values after the comma. So let's rename this step then to values. And now I'm gonna create another step where I just create a list with all of the headers. So here you can just type in uh, order date and then list all of them. Now. I have already done it, so let's copy that over. And you see, we have here now a list with all of the headers. So let's rename this step then to headers. And what we wanna do next here is take this list and then break it apart into more lists that contain blocks of six, okay? Now let's try to do this. I'm gonna go to my last step, insert a new step, and to split a list into multiple lists, you can use a function called list split. Okay, now let's see what it needs. First of all, it needs a list as a list. So that is gonna be over here, our values step, comma. Then it needs to know the page size. So how many items need to go into each list. So we could just type in a six over here and then enter. Now, instead of typing in here a six, what would be even better is if we say count, and then we wanna count the headers. Okay, so uh, if we add a header, uh, then it would uh, still work. Now, once you have done this and you click on the blank space right next to a list, then here at the bottom section, uh, you see what's inside of that list. And uh, so every time we have six values, okay? Now to not lose oversight, let's go here to our step, rename it, and we can rename it to maybe partitioned values. Okay, so now that we basically have a list with partitioned uh, values, yeah, we can transform that to records, and then we can convert it to a table and expand that table. Now let's do that step by step. So I'm gonna go over here, insert, a new step. So here we can use a function called uh, list.transform. Now first it needs a, a list, okay, which is gonna be our partition values, which we want to transform to records. Now for the second argument, we need to uh, have a transform as a function, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna take each list and then create records, okay? So record uh, from the list. Okay, bracket open. Now the lists that we have, and they are 
in here, right? So we want to take those and then we can uh, add the headers, which we have in the step headers. Now let's close the brackets. And now you see we have over here the records instead of the list. So the headers with the items in there. And then we can convert this to a table. Now this we can leave as it is. Then expand that column. We don't need the original prefix. And there you go. Now over here, I noticed one mistake. It shows you a value. So let's go back to the second step. And you see I left here the first row, which we need to get rid of. So remove over here items. Uh, the one that we want to remove are at the top. Let's insert it. And that's the first item that we want to remove. And then let's go back and you see now it's correct. And we can clean it up so that we end up with this. Okay, so we have seen three different ways of how to clean up this data set. Let's now load it and create the visual just to see if it works. Okay, first of all, we need a measure. So I'm gonna add a new measure that uh, calculates the sales amounts so that uh, multiplies the price with the quantity for each row in my table. So over here, I'm gonna have a sales measure. I can use some X, so we need an iterator to iterate over the table. And the table that we have is called restaurant orders. And we want to multiply the price with the quantity. Let's now create a bar chart and add that sales measure to it. Then break it down by the different items. And now let's play around with the formatting just a little bit and increase the minimum category width. Okay. And you see if you have everything in descending order, chicken tikka masala is at the top. Then we have rice, plain naan, comma, etc. Let's also add some data labels to it so that you can double check. So that's it for this challenge. If you have any troubles replicating one of the approaches that we took here, just, uh, just let me know in the comment section below. And um, also if you know a better way or a different way, uh, share it with us. And don't forget also to give it a rating on a scale from one to 10, how difficult did you find it? This will help future users a lot uh, so that they can look for challenges that match their scale level. Now, if you wanna stay up to date on all of our challenges, then don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you in the next video.